Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about the Wheel of Time and what exactly is it. This is for people who are trying to get into the TV show and don't really, you know, know what the Wheel of Time is. They've been seeing like all this promotional material and stuff like that uh, of going up like the posters, it's by Amazon. A lot of buzz has been going on about it, so uh, let's get into what is the Wheel of Time. The Wheel of Time is one of the greatest epic fantasy stories ever told um, along the scales of like Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings. There's much more fantasy fantasy series out there that should have adaptations, but The Wheel of Time is so deserving of it. The Wheel of Time was written by best-selling author Robert Jordan, and he asked himself in 1984 what if he was tapped on the shoulder and was told he was going to have to save the world, but at the same time destroy it. And from there sprung the masterful epic that would become one day The Wheel of Time. The Wheel of Time does a lot of the things that are sort of the same when you think about fantasy, when you think about like a farm boy that's supposed to like save the world, uh, when you think of the wizard that comes into the small town and like takes them out and stuff like that. But it also does all these things very unique and very different. I mean, first of all, the wizard that comes into town isn't this like old kind of like Merlin or like Gandalf, like Dumbledore type person. It's this young, like beautiful woman. Uh, that can use this magic and is known to be like one of the most powerful like magic users. The Wheel of Time is a story, it starts out at least as a story about these small town uh, kids who are put in very strenuous, very abnormal situations and being in that small town they've never known the outside world uh, but and then through the books they get to know the world even more and at the core of these books it's really about peoples and it's about societies and that's what Robin Jordan like does so well is um, craft these wonderful societies that are very unique, very different but they're not like gimmicky and they don't like pull from like other societies too much like it seems like it's its own raw like a real world and it's so fun to be able to discover that world while also at the same time beautiful character work is happening you're seeing these kids basically having to grow up in this environment grow up in this new world uh, and how much they grow and how much they change it's not always about just being noble and brave and all of these things people have their flaws and in Robert Jordan writes those flaws perfectly, so it's, they're not always going to make the right decisions, and that, that's why I say it's kind of like a balance between Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones, because Game of Thrones more has this like nihilistic view of the world, where obviously like Lord of the Rings is like, it seems like everything more has a purpose and everything's meant to happen, um, and then Wheel of Time kind of has like a mixture of those things. Um, and it works perfectly in its storytelling. The world of the Wheel of Time is so big with all of its societies, all of its kingdoms, all of its conflicts that are going on. Um, this is definitely a show that will scratch that itch a little bit uh, with the political part of Game of Thrones that you've been missing, but it's also going to scratch that itch of like such a wonderful and fantastic uh, sort of environment with the magic that's going on um, and then with all of the creatures that are around. And the biggest difference is that the Wheel of Time Books are actually finished where Game of Thrones books obviously are not finished so uh, the Wheel of Time actually has a very good ending in my opinion and it's concluded and they don't have to be wondering what's gonna be coming next or like guess what's gonna happen actually Rafe Junkins the showrunner of the show uh, came out and said that you're gonna need to know your ending to know where you're gonna start um, and he knows so he knows the ending he the books are all finished um, and he's gonna be trying to craft this this whole story together in about eight seasons so there's gonna be about eight seasons hopefully um, there's about 14 books in the wheel of time uh, so we'll see if we can mash them some of them up together there's definitely a time there where you can like fit maybe two or three books together I just like I hope they don't rush it uh, because the beauty is in Robert Jordan's words he does a very good job of painting a picture um, of painting this world, of really fleshing it out, um, and it's all in the details. So I really hope they don't skip out on stuff like that. Um, obviously getting the character work and all of that done correctly. But yeah, I know this like video has kind of been a little bit all over the place. I I've been trying to like figure out how to explain what the Wheel of Time is with like its core and its essence and stuff like that. But I guess what people really want to know is like, what's it about? What's the first book about? What am I getting into? Uh, so I'm going to read a synopsis from Dragon Mount and maybe that'll give a better insight to you guys. So uh, here we go. Strangers have come to a remote area in the two rivers. Strangers the likes of which Rand, Matt, and Perrin have never seen. A lady named Moraine, like out of a Gleeman's tale, and her warder Lan, and then the Gleeman to go with it. Fireworks, a Gleeman, and a lady, and all the time of Winter's Night Festival. Not even the presence of a dark figure, haunting the woods, 
a figure that wind does not seem to touch, can even scare their excitement. But then the Dark Rider returns, bringing with him Trollocs, the monstrous soldiers of the Dark One, blend of a man and an animal, and Winter's Night is torn apart in blood and fire. Only the work of the mysterious and powerful Aes Sedai, Moraine, pushes back the shadow spawn onslaught. Worse still, it becomes apparent that Trolloc attacks had a focus, Rand, Matt, and Perrin. Not knowing why the shadow seeks them, Moraine warns them they must leave or the shadow would return, and next time their village may not be so lucky. Fling the two rivers with Shadow Spawn hard on their heels, the boys had no choice but to trust Moraine as they seek the safety of the White Tower and fabled Tarvalin, the seat of the Aes Sedai's power. Yet the shadow is not to be denied and soon worse than Trollocs dog their trail. When they learn that the Dark One means to blind the Eye of the World, to slay the Great Serpent, and destroy the Wheel of Time itself, they realize they cannot run any further. If the Dark One is to be stopped, if the Wheel and Time is to be saved, it must be them to do it. But what can three village boys hope to achieve against the single greatest evil humanity has ever encountered? The Eye of the World marks the opening of blows of humanity's last desperate fight to the godlike Dark One. If they fall, existence falls with them. Yet, prophecy is dark and hopes are slim. Will victory be any better than defeat? Yeah, I think that was explained a lot better than how I can explain it. Um, <laughs> there's so much more to this. We didn't even get into Egwene, who's such a key figure as well. It's the Emmonsfield Five, that's kind of what they call it. Uh, and those are the five kind of kids or young adults that we really follow. Uh, and they go out and do great things in the world. Um, but it's these kids who are like, no, we just want to have a simple life. And they try to run away from all of this darkness, all of this uh, responsibility. Obviously, they're like teenagers. They don't want any responsibility, so they're running away from all of it they can. Um, but inevitably, they understand, okay, no, this thing is going to destroy the world and we're like the only ones to be able to save it. And that's kind of just like the first book and it goes into like so much more after that. I'm really excited to see it adapted to screen. Um, I'm hoping that most of the magic, most of the charm is able to uh, translate over screen. Um, and I'm just excited to see what they have and it's coming in November, so it's super soon. If you like this video, uh, guys, make sure that you like and subscribe and make sure you comment below what you wanna see next. I'll see you guys in the next one.